Hello and welcome to Learn Data. I'm Nilesh and in this video we'll continue to learn about missing values. In this video you'll learn how to fill missing values and how we can use the methods such as pad, forward fill, back fill and mean to uh, add data in where there are missing values. Additionally we'll also look at how we can drop columns and rows that have missing values in them. So let's get into Jupyter Notebook and start coding. Here in Jupyter Notebook, I've already imported three libraries, NumPy, Pandas, and Matplotlib, and created the data frame uh, DF2 that we see here. The data frame has three columns, X, Y, and Z. One is numeric, uh, the other has alphabets, and the last column, Z, has booleans in them. Now let's go ahead and look at the very first method in which we can replace the NaN values by a value that we specify by using fill Na. In fill na command, the way we want to type is df2.fillna and let's say we want to replace all the nan values by zero, then we would type df2.fillna open close parenthesis zero. And here as we can see, all the nan values such as at index level 12, we have we had nan, now we replaced it by zero. And that was that's true in rest of the columns as well. Moving on, let's say if we want to specifically change or replace the NN values in only one particular column, that's also possible. To do that, what we can do is select that column. So DF2 column, let's say we want to select Y. And in this column, we want to change the values and replace it by a, say another string, say not available. Then when we run this, all the NN values within that uh, column are now replaced to uh, not available. And if you want to see that change in the data frame DF2, we would simply type DF2, uh, open square brackets Y, close square bracket, and then here we want to type is equal to DF2. And this way, only that particular column in the data frame DF2 is replaced by the new column, uh, new data set, uh, which has not available in the in the same column why as you can see here let's go ahead and get our original df2 back i'll run this cell again and now moving on let's see how we can use the pad method to add or change values that are missing in the data frame so if we remember the data frame df2 has these values when we use the pad method what happens is it works like a forward fill so the nn uh, at this location 12 is replaced by the value that's before it so 3 so 12 position will have 3 similarly 14 position will have 4 value uh, and in column y the 14 position would have the value b so let's see how we can implement uh, pad method to uh, change or replace missing values. The method is df2 dot fill na method is equal to pad and as you can see this worked similarly as we talked earlier so though at 14 the values from 13 have been replaced wherever there were any ends. Similarly if you look at 18 and 19 the nn values were replaced by one in column x because that was the value that was present for uh, location 17. So that's a for a method called pad. In pad method as you see all the nns were replaced. We can go ahead and change this behavior by limiting how many nns it, it should be able to fill. To do that what we need to specify is a limit and the limit is specified as uh, another parameter in when we call the fill na say so if we specify limit is equal to one now when we run the command we see that only one value is replaced after a particular existing value for example here uh, uh, labels 17 18 and 19 we have the 18 and 19 that have nns but when we limit the forward uh, pad to only one in that case only 18 uh, row, row with label 18 has the forward fill values 
all other uh, columns such as 19 stays as is it stays as n a n now similar to pad there is another method called forward fill and it works in same way as uh, the pad method so let's see how how that works df2 dot fill n a and here if you specify method is equal to uh, in quotes f f i l l and you, again if we limit this to one uh, we can see the result is identical to what we had earlier in column if you look at the rows uh, with labels 18 and 19 the 19 is still an n because we had specified one as a limit and therefore the nns after uh, row with label 17 only one row is filled which was the row uh, with label 18 similar to forward fill there is another command called b fill or back fill so let's see how that command works for backfill again we type df2 dot fill na method is equal to b fill and in this case the filling method goes from bottom row towards the top so if we look at our original data frame df2 here we can see that the row uh, with label 12 has an ends but this time since we are using backfill the in column x at label 12 the value will be 4 instead of 3 3 was when we had a forward fill now in backfill we should have 4 and that's what we have here similarly if you look at 18 and 9 18 19 and 17 uh, for column z we can see that it's replaced by true instead of false so because we are doing a backfill the values from the row below uh, nn is carried over and replaced above similar to forward fill uh, we can use the limit uh, to limit how many backfills we want to do so if we type df2 dot fill na method is equal to b fill limit is equal to one in this case we are going to limit only one row uh, uh, that is being replaced for example here uh, labels with rows with labels 18 and 19 were nans however with backfill uh, with a limit of one we replaced the values of nans by values of rows below it to only one row the row number row with label 18 is still nan okay so there is another way we can write the backfill and the method is uh, using the entire word backfill uh, it works in the same way so if we have df2 dot fill na method is equal to backfill and again if we specify limit is equal to one it works the same way except that we are specifying backfill instead of b fill now moving on let's go ahead and create a new data frame so this would be data frame df dfa pd dot data frame and here we'll create two columns x and y so the x will have random integers random dot random integers and we'll start at one and go up to five and let's create five of them so we'll have five rows and similar to x we'll go ahead and create another column y now this column instead of starting at zero let's start this column at uh, sorry starting at one let's start this column at zero and in addition to this we can add any n values here so let's look at how the data frame looks this is how it looks now we can go ahead and add n a n values so dfa dot lock uh let's say zero and zero up to two for column x let's make all those nans and let's see what we get uh is equal to so this is how our data frame looks right now um, we can create a go ahead and create a copy of this so dfb is equal to dfa dot copy uh 
and in this copy we'll add uh, additional column z which will be just dfb and df the df a or dfb doesn't matter so we can have the column y in there and let's look at dfb now let's see if we can add nn values to column z here so dfb dot lock and we'll put instead of one and four in column z at these two rows index two and three uh, let's convert them to nn and now look at dfb so that's the column uh, we have created for z here now let's see uh, what happens if we use the mean to fill the nn values so the command we want to type is dfb dot fill na and dfb dot mean so when we run this all the nn values are now replaced with the mean value for example in column x the mean of that column is 2 plus 3 divided by 2 that is 1.5 and therefore all the three nns are now replaced by 1.5 similarly for other columns such as z the mean value of is here for 2.33 instead of nans now as we can see the nns were replaced in all columns there is also a way in which we can if there were more than one uh, more than three columns and there was subset that we needed to replace then we could do that also so for example df let's add another column here let's say z z1 and uh, it has the value same as dfb dot z and we can go ahead and add another column z2 and then uh, again has the same value as z and add another column z3 now when we have a data frame such as this one and if we need to replace the nn values in all these z1 through z2 and z3 columns then we can do that so dfb dot fill na me dfb dot mean and here we want to specify in open close square brackets the range so z1 colon z3 and now when this has to be fill na now when we run this we can see that the nn values within all these three uh, columns was al were also replaced in addition to this range let's say for example if we wanted to uh, replace only specific uh, records uh, specific columns that are not in uh, uh, increasing range for example let's say we want to change the values in x and we had to change value in z1 how do we do that so uh, let's go back to our data frame now we can use the in where command so what where and not na so if you look at the pd dot not na and we type dfb here what we see is wherever there is na n it's uh, false because it's not a uh, it's not not na it means it, this is na and therefore it, it is coming up as false and the uh, value for example 2 here is n is not na and therefore we are getting this as true so we can use this command uh, along with the where statement where we can specify dfb dot where pd dot not na dfb and here you can specify uh, what we want it to fill it by so dfb dot mean open close parenthesis axis is equal to one and now what we get is wherever there is na and an we have replaced those values with the mean value of that particular column across the entire data frame so uh, that's one way where we can replace the nn values within the entire data frame now moving on let's look at how we can use the drop commands to drop either a row or a column from a data frame to uh, remove the nns for the data frame we can use is dfb and here if we say dfb dot drop na axis is equal to zero then what it will do is it will drop all the rows that have at least one nn value 
so all the rows from 0 1 2 3 all these will be dropped only we should see the last row and that's what we see similarly uh, if we use the command uh, dfb dot drop na and here instead of axis 0 if we specify axis 1 then it, we should see that all command all columns are dropped from the data frame dfb except column y and uh, that's exactly what we see i hope you learned uh, something about how we can replace the nn values within a data frame by using forward fill back fill and how to drop values in a data frame that are nas in the next video we'll continue this discussion and work on an interesting topic of interpolation where we can add new values into to replace the missing values by using a spline or polynomials means or linear fit and that's going to be really interesting as well so please like share and subscribe it helps me stay motivated to create more interesting content for you all thank you and i'll see you all in the next video